GABA. This is your other inhibitory neurotransmitter. This one's built with taurine. Taurine is very, very popular with um, a lot of people who use GABA supplementation to help fight with um, anxiety attacks is more what runs along this line. Um, so you'll feel the tightness in the chest and feel like everything's just racing. That's where you have not enough GABA. The body needs GABA to slow down. A lot of type A personalities run under high stress lifestyle, multitasking all the time, and they tend to run low in the GABA. Okay? So this is where um, that parasympathetic nervous system that I was talking about with the <coughs> really comes into play. A lot of my type A personalities, I will find that I adjust the atlas quite a bit. In the atlas, create, it works on the vagal nerve, and that vagal nerve goes to every organ in the body, and that creates a la relaxation effect. So just from the adjustment, I can create a relaxation effect, but if we're not doing other things to help support that relaxation, we're not going to get yeah, let's build up. It's an amazing adjustment. Uh, uh, that one, uh, I see blood pressure also drop by 20 mm -hmm. points sometimes just with that one single maneuver. And it's immediate. And it stays down. And um, uh, GABA, or that vagal nerve that Dr. Stacy was mentioning, you can also affect really powerfully just by breathing. Just three seconds in, hold one second, and then three seconds out. If you do that five times, all of a sudden your blood pressure just starts going down. You can actually break a panic attack with that and get that GABA Dr. Stacy is talking about to go down quickly. These breathing, uh, these, this breathing exercise is phenomenal and we don't talk about it often enough. So. Another thing that you look at is um, green tea really affects GABA in the body. It is very helpful for the body to raise chlorine levels and help affect GABA so it's relaxing. That's one of the good things about tea. <laughs> now, acetylcholine. Uh, this is your memory neurotransmitter. This can also be slightly inhibitory. Um, it's built from choline and B5. Choline is found in eggs and soy lecithin. Okay. Um, low levels, this is where Alzheimer's comes in. This is actually a long-term deficiency of acetylcholine. This doesn't just all of a sudden hit you. 60, 70, 80, whenever it decides to hit your body, it's not because you've had low levels or problems building up acetylcholine just at those ages. It's been years and years, 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 years in coming, depending on how you've treated your body, what your lifestyle is, and how deficient you are in certain nutrients. So what you're going to find is we're going to talk a lot about nutrition and, and how these nutrients can play effects on the different neurotransmitters. It's not about what you are getting, it's about what you aren't getting. So a lot of it is where we're going to break down and actually look at our, our diet and what we're eating, our food plans, sorry, and what we're eating and see where we're deficient. Because most of us are deficient in at least one nutrient. It depends on which one there is. Um, interesting statistic that Mark Hyman had put in his Ultra Mind Solution book is that 99% of us are deficient in EPA in our body. And that's fish oils. Okay? Very interesting because you don't really think about that. That back when we were hunters and gatherers, we used to have fresh water fish all the time. Berries, fruits, nuts, and seeds. And we've moved so far away from that now that we're so processed that we're so deficient in a lot of our multivitamins that we need every day. So we're going to talk a little bit about the web. Mind and spirit. This is the big one tonight. So we're going to talk about how all of this affects your mind and how we react to things. Because that's spiritually what, what we're doing. Structural imbalance. I talked a little bit about that with the, the adjustment of the atlas. There are other things, of course, that can affect in your structure on how it's going to affect your mind and spirit. If you're sore and you're aching from an injury, of course it's going to make you feel down and low because you can't go out and do the things that you want to do. So the structural imbalance does play a big component on whether or not it affects um, your neurotransmitters. There's not a lot of hard research on this. Energy production and ox oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is a very big one that you talk a lot about when you're dealing with the brain. Because if you have a lot of oxidative stress going on, it's going to affect the brain and it'll excite your glutamate receptors. And your glutamate receptors, so say you have food allergies, you're fighting an infection, or you have toxic overload in your liver, that's going to increase your energy production.
production, increase your oxidative stress, it's going to increase your glutamate production, and glutamate in the long run in those situations kills brain cells. So stress, not necessarily a good thing. I know some of us like to live on the edge and adrenaline rush every now and then isn't so bad, but we have to keep it to a minimum. Hormonal and neurotransmitter imbalance. I love these. Hormones, I think, are some of my favorite things to deal with because there's so much that's going on that your hormones are telling you of what you're not doing correctly. And it's, and it's so obvious. And, and women, I think, notice this a little bit more than men do because we tend to cycle every month. Some not every month, but you notice that how one cycle can be worse, the next cycle can be better, the next one can be ten times worse and better. And a lot of it is if you look back of what, one, the time of year is, Two, how much exercise you have, and what our diet has been two weeks before the cycle starts. Two? Yep, about two weeks. So you can affect it within two weeks. So if you start changing what you've been eating within two weeks of the cycle, you'll see that less sugar, more complex carbohydrates, a better balanced meal with low levels of good protein, um, so that whether that's turkey or chicken, um, those things can also affect on how we feel or how much bloating a woman will have, or headaches, and things like that. Um, women are so fortunate, they get a report card every month. Towards the end, end of the day. 